gentle people and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time joining me, again welcome and if you are a returning viewer, welcome also. When I posted my first YouTube video, it was of an Afro lady serving tray. Uh, that particular video has had over 4,000 views, so that's exciting. And the holidays are here, so I decided now would be a nice time for me to make a few more of these trays. One, because they are beautiful on the table when you're serving, and two, they make excellent gifts. So today I am going to make a new Afro Lady serving tray, and it will have a holiday festive theme. So when I, present, when I do my materials, I try to do them in the order in which I'm going to use them. So the first thing we need, of course, is the Afro Lady silicone mold. And then if you look at my very first video, I was using the Moss, M-A-S, the Moss um, tabletop uh, epoxy resin. And I have told you that I tend to now use the Craft Smart because I am always, or not always, but often able to purchase it at almost 50% off. When I have a 40% off coupon and a $10 rewards voucher, uh, my $99 Craft Smart resin comes out to be about $50. So, so we need Craft Smart. Part A resin, Craft Smart Part B hardener, and then a large measuring cup. That cup has resin dried in it. We're going to need three large cups. We will need one small cup, <clears throat> some brand new nitro gloves. A large spatula to stir the large amount of resin. Four stir sticks for the four colors that we're going to be using. I divide my colors um, using a straw and I would recommend if you can find them that you purchase milkshake straws and that's because they're wider, they're fatter. So we need a straw. Oop, did that stay? And then rather than have the lady be brown, have brown skin this time I decided to do something a little different and I'm going to make her actually black so I'm using the Let's Resin black mica powder I will be using the Saya pearlescent wine red Pearl X emerald and the eye candy 14 karat nugget gold and to give it just a little bit of bling I'll be using the shamrock holographic glitter shamrock to go in the green and to the wine red we're going to be adding recollections cherry glitter is that still inside the frame and I haven't decided if I'm going to add the gold but I'm going to put it over here anyway so if I decide to add it then we have it and then I think what am I missing the handles we need handles we need handles so I did originally choose gold handles but I thought the gold would be too bright so what I decided on was to go with these deeper colored handles. So handles there and I'm always saying I think that's it because I put it out there and then sometimes when I'm working then I realize I forgot something. But I think that's it. This particular mold requires 500 milliliters of resin and I always mark that on the back of my mold so I know exactly what I'm working with 
And before I pour my resin, I also make sure that I mark the amounts on my measuring container. So if we need 500 milliliters of resin, that means 250 of the resin, 250 of the hardener, because this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to pour that, 250 of part B. Two hundred and fifty milliliters of part A, you always mix your resin according to the manufacturer's instructions. Uh, the times vary depending on the brand of resin. CraftSmart requires you to mix your resin for a minimum of five minutes. And so I'm going to start the timer and then I'm just going to fast forward for five minutes and then we'll add some color. When you have finished mixing your resin, it should be crystal clear. There should be no swirls, no striations. It should be like looking through, um, a, looking into a glass of pure, it should be like looking into a glass of purified water. Okay, so we need a little bit of gold. Small cup. Some green, some red, and if I've done this correctly, I should have approximately, yep, 250 milliliters left. So let's just set that aside for now, and, and we're going to mix our 14 karat gold. This is really pretty. I'm not even sure if that needs glitter. So that's our gold. And then we're going to do our emerald. Yeah, the Saya red wine. This is really pretty. I didn't want to do a bright red but the glitter will make it brighter. I wanted this to be sort of understated, kind of understated elegance, I guess. Plus, if you're putting food on the tray, uh, most foods will not look nice against bright red, but they will look good against a maroon, a cranberry, a wine red. I'm going to mix the black right in the measuring cup. I am going to cut this straw. And that straw is just a separator to separate. The straw is to separate, keep the colors separate so that when you pour the black, the other colors don't run into it. And I like to put either a stick or 
you could just as easily use a pencil or a paintbrush to go underneath that. Okay, and so now we're going to add our black. And this Let's Resin black is not really a dark black. It's more of a charcoal black. It has, it's, it has a gray tint to it. And so now I'm going to add some red, this cherry glitter to this wine red to liven it up a little bit. And I'm going to add the shamrock glitter to the green. So now I'm going to actually make her dress, I guess is what you'd call it. Make her top, make her shirt, make her dress. And you'll see that the black is starting to move. Okay, and we're going to let this set for about 20 minutes, and then we're going, I'm going to come back and I'm going to make the kinks, make the curls in her hair. Um, but before I do that, let's just hit this with the heat gun. And everybody, if you've watched my videos before, you know that this table is not level. 
and so I'm always adding a popsicle stick on this side okay so you see my my straw is not quite holding but it's holding good enough so we'll come back in about 15 20 minutes let this set a little bit and then we'll come in and we'll make the curls oh that's completely moving ah, that completely that completely moved that's not what we wanted Okay, I'm just going to pull that out of there. I'm going to add a little more gold. Okay, so it's been about uh, 15 minutes, so now we're going to go ahead and work on the curls. When you're doing this, it's better that you, if you have a silicone stir stick, that's better. Um, if you are using a wooden stir stick like these popsicle sticks, a lot of times you'll actually scratch uh, the surface of your mold and that you don't want to do. So now that her hair is decorated, let's just do some swirls. Let's get her some kinks in here. Okay, so it's kind of dark back here, so I'm just going to, instead of zig, I'm going to do some more zigging and zagging. Heavier back in the back. Swirl some more. And I'm not adding the heat gun to this because when you add heat to it, it makes the resin expand and your curls start to break up. So what we're going to do now is just add some more of this green down here. Add some more of the gold. And so now I'm just going to just put a couple of drops of gold in her hair. Just some drops of gold in her hair. Okay. 
I think I'll do the same with the little bit of green I have left. A drop. And since we did the green and the gold, we might as well do the same thing with the red. A lot of people like to allow their tray to cure and then take their handles and screw their handles in. I do not want to drill holes into my resin um, just because I have a concern of the resin possibly cracking. So I'm going to put my handles in while my resin is wet. Then we are just going to Place a handle there. Just handle there. Yes, I'm glad I didn't choose the gold handles. I think it would have been a lot of competition. Okay, so I took the cover off and did a look-see. This is the next morning. And um, I wish the straw had kept this spot. I wish the straw had stayed in place. That's why you need milkshake straws, the big fat ones. Um, but uh, as I look at it, uh, there's a little air bubble here. And there's a little high spot there. So I'm just going to take my Dremel, I'm going to sand those two spots down, and then I'm just going to do a flood coat over this um, to just finish it off. And yeah, there's a spot right there. I don't know, let me see if I can zoom in. <clears throat> A little raised spot right there and another one right there so I'm just going to sand that down with my Dremel and then we'll do a flood coat Alcohol. And I did not realize that I had not turned the camera on, so I've already mixed the resin for the flood coat. And so I just mixed uh, 60 milliliters, so that would be 30 milliliters of resin and 30 milliliters of the hardener. And we're just going to pour this on here. fill in these spots that I sanded.
Okay, and we're just going to take our little palette knife and just push. Make sure this resin goes right up to the edges. <clears throat> Morning voice stuff in my throat. And be sure to get underneath the handle. Again, make sure you get, because of this curved edge, make sure you push that resin. Because otherwise you'll have an uneven edge. Okay, our heat gun. To pop any bubbles this time. Really examine your edges. And that looks good to me. Gold resin that I put for her eyelashes spread. It moved. So I am going to just take a... I am going to take a toothpick. And I am going to drop some gold resin right there on her eyelash. Actually, not gold resin. I'm going to take some gold mica powder. All right, I don't see any air bubbles. Oop. Let's see, I think we missed a spot right here. All righty, I like that. So let's one more time with the heat gun, and then we are through. The only thing we have to do is unmold. It definitely has a holiday, uh, Christmassy feel to it. Let's get this cover off of here. And let's see what we're looking. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that clear coat. Oh, that's wonderful. Boy, those two, one, two, three spots, totally gone. If you have a problem like I had where I had the couple of air bubbles, again, sand those out and then do a flood coat and you just simply cannot tell that there was ever a problem. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get her out of here. Okay, so then when we take a look, see, <clears throat> I can never tell from this side. Oh. We just have a few spots. We just have a few spots. We've got, well, that actually peels off. That peels off. That peeled off. So if you look right around her neck, we just gotta, that peels off.
So just clean around her neck, otherwise she looks good. Cuticle trimmers. Just going to take this <clears throat> our deburring tool. This is great when you have curves like this because this rotates this blade. Let me show you. This blade rotates. And I think that's all we have to do. I'm going to take the sanding block <clears throat> and just sand that neck curve right there. Once I sanded that, it left a white. Where I sanded that, you can see. I don't know let's, how to turn this. Left a little white. Where it was sanded, it left a little white edge. And so the way we're going to handle that, so you can't tell that that was sanded, is we're going to just go over that little white edge with some varnish. Deco Art Gloss Varnish. And all you need is a dab on the tip of a brush. <clears throat> And then go right along that edge that we sanded and you will never be able to tell Everything else on her looks good.